On December 1st, 2019, it snowed about two feet in the Berkshires. I couldn't sleep. I stayed up until the wee hours of the night, running around and capturing it. Just the snow plows and I. Winter had arrived stronger than ever, and hunker down season had officially begun. One cold and icy morning in early December, Mason and I woke up with the sun. We wanted to see our hills in their new white blanket. I gotta take our cars out here. Huh? Oh, you can't. I gotta let's fill the Audi up with this stuff. Dude, we should. We should. <laughs> Can we? Yeah. It'll drive like it never has. Where are we going? Uh, we go to Bennington, Vermont, the uh, the Deerfield State Airport. That sounds wonderful. at a house that was for sale on the main street in Ashfield. We can, if we go around the other way. It was old and quirky and had a stream right in the backyard. What's that? It's like a 10 foot hole. Yeah, right. And the weirdest part was the only thing left on the wall in the whole house was an autumn shot of the mountain I grew up next to. I shot almost an identical film photo this past fall. I mean, what are the chances? Life has been full of these little serendipities lately. So you can put your mittens on it to dry. Ooh. Yeah. I got out cross-country skiing a bunch with the new snow, too. It really helped my mind and body stay healthy.
and Noah and I got tons of work done this December. We edited for almost a month straight, but we balanced it with some sporadic days and a more relaxed attitude. You can't force creativity. Taking time to rest your mind and unwind is just as important as the work itself. Get it. You too, Wall. Well. This one's the real culprit. That's true. There was a lot of progress on the cabin before the end of the year, too. Little by little, the dream is coming to life. With the snow came the assurance that it was okay to slow down, to stay inside and catch up on things. You don't feel like you're missing out when it's freezing outside. Take the saw. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I don't remember. The United States, right? Definitely. Yeah. I got the truck undercoated before the snow to protect it from the elements so I could drive it on the shoulder seasons. And my dad and I took it to get our Christmas tree. It felt like we were living in a Norman Rockwell painting. Yeah, it's warm in there. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> We couldn't have picked a better night to do it. And for Christmas, I got my nephew Liam a microphone, a tambourine, an electric guitar, and a little amp. He loves shaky graves. He's going to be a musician one day. He can hold a pretty good rhythm. Experiment lifesavers? <laughs> lifesavers. Oh, the reeds. Yeah. And on December 27th, I started something I've been dying to do for a long time. <sighs> I'm so excited. I haven't been on a road trip in years. stops before I was officially on the road. This trip was just going to be my Rover and I. The first car I ever bought with my own money. And the one vehicle I've had the longest. So 
So I said bye to Hooter and my mom and dad and made one last trek up to the cabin to say bye to Mason and Yolani. to the river were getting installed. It was surreal to see it happening. So I was heading west to see my brother out in Idaho. I was going to catch up and do some skiing and get away from work for a while. My plan was to be gone about 10 days total, leave December 27th and be back early January. <laughs> Just wait till you see how that played out. The open road, my favorite feeling in the world. Just me and my machine, relying on each other. Now, of course, everything has been discovered by now, but this is the closest thing I've found to feeling like a pioneer. It's just pure freedom. One of my favorite things to do on the road is stay at cheap old motels. It reminds me of 2013 when Simon and I drove across the country for the first time. We had little money and we were frugal and we just made do with what we could afford. Turns out you end up meeting the greatest characters and having the most unforgettable memories when you travel that way. Hitting the cheap local spots, 
studying the nooks and crannies of real America, it's fascinating. It opens your mind to the fact that we all live in our own little bubble, no matter how cultured we are. A lot has changed for me since those days. I built a solid career for myself and don't need to worry about money as much. But in order to get there, I had to dedicate most of my time to my work. I was living the dream in most people's eyes, but what was missing was the freedom, the spontaneity. Now I wouldn't change a thing. The dedication to work allowed me to earn everything I dreamed of. The old cars, the cabin, the camera gear, the things I know I want in the long run. Now what I was chasing was time. Time to enjoy what I built, to focus on music and writing and making these stories for you. Because in the end, that's what makes me the happiest. Now I know it sounds simple, just stop working as much, but it's not that easy. The truth is you have to keep the lights on. And when you build a life based around a certain income level, you kind of trap yourself. And when you do great work, you build strong relationships with clients who really rely on you. And because of that, constant opportunities come your way. The instinct is to stay the course and seize the opportunities while they're there. And most people's advice is to do just that. Why give up a good thing? So the whole ride west, I was chewing this over, trying to figure out how to ease out of it all and take more time for my personal art. It meant that I would make a lot less money, but that I would be completely free. And in the end, I would do what my gut has been telling me to do all along. The thing about having a ton of work is that it never leaves your mind. All these open projects, the non-stop calls and emails and revisions, even if you take a day off, you can't truly escape. The dream job of being your own boss ends up being a catch-22. And that's not to say there isn't a way to make it all work. It just comes back to balance, which is easier said than done. And I'm not complaining to you. I love my life in the way it's all happened. The one thing I can promise on this channel is that I'll always be myself. I want to give you my raw stream of conscious thoughts in case some of you have ever had similar feelings. Because what's the point of putting something out in the world if it isn't honest and true to who you are? So after a few days of Alan Watts lectures and self-reflection, here I was, hours from Idaho.
So it was New Year's Eve, and I had finally arrived in Jackson where I was meeting Simon. Just in time, too. He lives right over the pass in Idaho, but we were going to spend New Year's Eve on the mountain. I don't know all the answers. I mean, I need to pond it off of you, Steve. There was a magical energy in the air. That old New Year's optimism and excitement. Twenty nineteen was life changing. So to spend the last few days of it reflecting on my life and trying to figure out how to chase my true soul dreams in twenty twenty was beautiful. And to get to bring in the year with Simon, my brother, my truest friend, there's nothing more I could have asked for. To end the year with a full heart, there in the Wild West, with nothing but freedom on my mind, I was already one step closer. Do you have any parting words for 2019? Just that hopeful.